So there's been a lot of talk about canceling student debt, which is a very good idea because student debt is crippling our society and other countries have already figured out education's a public good and should be accessible to the public, especially when you live in the richest country in the frickin' world, like the United States. So there's some proposals out here for this, but uh, here's a fun little opinion piece we're, that we're gonna go through here. Uh, let's see. Bernie Sanders student loan forgiveness creates more inequality. Okay. Senator Bernie Sanders introduced an ambitious plan this week to cancel all student loan debt. Uh, similarly, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren's student loan debt forgiveness plan would be funded by a new tax on ultra business, uh, ultra billionaires, excuse me. So the College for All Act, which is Bernie Sanders' plan, this would cancel the student loan debt of nearly 45 million Americans who pay an average of $3,000 per year uh, and subsidize college tuition for low-income individuals underrepresented in certain districts. In total, this plan would cost $2.2 trillion. This would be paid for by new taxes on Wall Street, a 0.5 tax on stock trades, a 0.1 fee on bonds, a 0.005% fee on derivatives. According to Sanders, these taxes would raise more than $2.4 trillion. So it would be enough to pay for it. This costs $2.2 trillion. These Wall Street taxes would raise $2.4 trillion. Okay, so the article could have just ended there. After they say, hey, there's a plan out there to eliminate student debt. Here's how they work. Uh, here's how it's paid for. But here's the opinion part. As a recent college graduate paying off student loan debt, Sanders' plan sounds great to me in theory, but if applied, it would create new kind of inequality among graduates from varying educational backgrounds with differing degrees of debt. And it would be unfair to those who have been consistently paying off their student loans for years. By what standards? How is this? So that's like the equivalent. Oh, well, well, people have different amounts of debt and people have been paying it at different amounts and they have been paying it with a different amount of frequency based on their ability. This isn't fair to all them. That's like being like, man, let's say that some good Samaritan came along and told everyone in my apartment complex, hey, do you got a car payment? I'm paying off your car. And everyone in the complex is like, yes, high five and everyone going, this is awesome. And then one person goes, wait a second, that person's car costs more than my car. So they're getting a bigger, they're getting bigger debt forgiveness than me. That's not fair. I don't want any debt forgiveness at all. And hold on, this person missed a car payment because they're working two and three jobs to survive. They should be punished, not rewarded for that. And then everyone else in the complex is like, why is this person such an asshole? We know which neighbor we're not going to invite to the picnic. Now, unfortunately, my apartment complex doesn't have a picnic. I wish we did. I think we should. Everyone who's arguing against uh, ending student loan debt, you're that person that no one wants to invite to the picnic. That is who you are. There is nothing. What if we just didn't do anything based on people who didn't have well for people who paid off their debt this isn't fair to them okay well i guess we should have never had cars because cars aren't fair to people who had to travel on horseback for so many years really wasn't fair to them uh i i guess it's unfair i guess it's unfair that we have fast laptops and computers with the internet because some people had to pay three thousand dollars for a computer at some point Getting a little bit of your hair in my nostrils, by the way, Lucy. I guess it's not fair that that she gets to have the best cat food available to cats now when a bunch of cats back in the day, they didn't even have specialized cat food. I, I, you get the idea. And, okay, if you don't have student loan debt, well, I don't have any student loan debt. Okay, well, are you going to have kids? Guess what? They're not going to have student loan debt now. That's a pretty good thing. Uh, do you have a small business? More people are going to have expendable income now. Canceling student loan debt benefits all of society, not just people with student loan debt. It benefits everybody. So uh, all these arguments against it are, are, can just be traced back to pure selfishness and short-sightedness. If you're going to just, uh, well, I have mine, so fuck everyone else. Okay, that's a shitty attitude. But it actually does benefit you too. And it's such a crippling debt on our society, uh, instituted by predatory loan practices. Oh, well, you agreed to a loan, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, these are predatory loans that back people into a corner. 
it shouldn't be legal what they're doing and what they've continu- continued to do. So somehow, you know, for the people who are against canceling student loan debt, you don't have a problem with predatory loan practices exploiting people for profit, but you do have a problem with the idea of education as a public good. How backwards is that? The answer is very. It's very backwards. But let's go to this article. Let's see some of the arguments here. So student loan payments depend on several variables. Number of years spent in school, salaries, the prioritization of expenses, to name a few. Those who struggle to pay their debt on an entry-level salary, often at the expense of leisurely pleasures like eating out and traveling, will justifiably feel cheated out of Sanders' quote, government bailout. This is what the article calls it. You really... What's wrong with you if your student loan debt gets canceled and all you think about is, man, all that time I spent paying it, and I bet some people didn't pay theirs. Well, fuck them. I I mean, if you want policy based off of if everyone thinks it's totally fair or not, and if some people are going to feel that they're cheated or they're going to feel bitter, like, what like 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 what the fuck like like it's just the dumbest way to look at something and and you know what this is going to transition into the song of the day uh the song of the day uh green day 86 now i'm not the biggest green day fan in the world um as of recent especially but i do like some of their older stuff and the reason that the song of the day today pretty much all of the arguments against student loan debt can be traced back to hey, they're selfish people in the world and let's consider their feelings. The anti-student loan debt cancellation crew might as well just call themselves hashtag selfish lives matter. Because that's what this is all, oh, well, I had had less debt than this person and they're canceling theirs and they got more and blah, blah, blah. Someone said, oh, well, they're going to cancel debt for rich people too. No, because rich people aren't taking out student loans. And again, it benefits everybody. The idea of college as a public good, of education as a public good, benefits everyone. It benefits a populace. It leads to a better society. It leads to an economy with more expendable income. It leads to lower crime. Canceling student debt benefits every single person in this country, whether they have student loan debt or not. Obviously, the people with crippling debt, it benefits them the most, sure, but it benefits everyone. So, the reason Green Day is the song of the day, uh, bringing it back here, um, you know, I did learn a lot of life's most valuable lessons from punk rock, and I was watching a Green Day documentary one day years ago, uh, I was maybe 10 or 11 years old, I was really young, and there was this, like, documentary on Green Day, and Green Day singer Billy Joe Armstrong, uh, did grow up relatively poor, and they asked him what that was like growing up poor, and if it ever bothered him. And he said, you know, my mom taught me to never worry about the people that have more. Because, you know, like, he, they, they talked about how, like, you know, he, he grew up in Northern California. There were some rich people around him, but he was, he was not. He did not come from means. And he said, you know, my mom taught me early, you should never worry about people who have more. You should never, never dwell on people who have more and think, oh, they have more than me. Lucky them. You should only worry about the people who have less. And uh, that's a great life lesson. And I first heard it from a Green Day documentary. So kudos to Billy Joe in that regard. That's a great life lesson your mom passed on to you. And I think that uh, life lesson is very applicable here. You should never worry about the people who have more. You should worry about the people who have less. Don't worry about someone who maybe got uh, more debt canceled than you got canceled. Or the people who got debts canceled while other folks uh, didn't or, or you didn't. Worry about the fact that there is a crippling debt situation in this society that is bringing society down. And here's a solution for it that'll better everyone in society. Oh, and all those little Wall Street taxes that are going to pay for it. Guess what? The people on Wall Street are still going to be rich. So don't even get a violin for them. That's absolutely ridiculous. All right, so there's that. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. 
get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and 